Dinner Frips Aries 2 deck. I was just going to talk a little bit about how I got here, why I got this deck, ultimately why I'm selling this deck, and what I'm thinking is next. Um, so this, this deck has gotten quite a bit of coverage, lots of very positive reviews. Um, and the reason is, is because it's fantastic. It's made incredibly well. This thing is a brick. Um, just to back up for a sec, a Artur resistor ladder DAC is different than many of the DACs we buy today because it's not a sort of pre-baked DAC chip that is doing all the onboard converting and then, you know, manufacturer buys that chip and then basically they wire up to it and they wire up out of it. Um, you know, digital in, analog out, kind of done. And really it's more about the rest of the circuit design that determines whether it's a good DAC or not, or if you like the sound characteristics. Whereas this is actually a big array of uh, resistors doing the conversion from digital bits to analog. Um, and, and you know, I guess the, the argument or the intention of that is that you end up with something that creates kind of more of an analog sound or a smoother sound, a little bit less of a digital sound. Um, eh. <laughs> it all, it's all at the end of the days about turning uh, ones and zeros into audio signal. Um, the, re the reason I ended up um, ordering one of these up um, directly from the uh, wholesaler who's, uh, um, I want to say based in Singapore now, um, that retails these, or the retailer, um, that retails these um, for Denifrips, um, which is a Chinese-based company, is that um, I guess my DAC journey began when I said, hey, I've heard about these outboard DACs. I'm wondering if, you know, maybe that sounds a little better than what my computer or my phone can do. And so I got, you know, probably a $100 outboard DAC, and I was like, yeah, that's that definitely sounds a lot better. Cool. What if, what if I spend a little more money? Um, and I, I got the, uh, SML SU eight and I was like, well, this thing, this thing sounds great. Um, I was researching, I wanted something that sounded kind of natural. Um, you know, I, I, I listen to records. I like that kind of slightly warmer, you know, slightly more musical kind of sound, less analytical. Um, so I got that thing and I really liked it for a long time. Um, but it still sounded a little, a little digitally to me compared to say like listening to my more analog my analog source music um and so I, I got to researching and i came across these uh old burr brown chips and these you know newly built ladder decks and i was like oh that sounds really interesting and um these guys seem to be making an incredibly quality product um that wasn't just stupidly expensive or wasn't like you know a ladder deck baked into some crazy old CD player and it just seemed very accessible um, and the things are not cheap but I mean some of these ladder decks are just insane I think this thing's about 750 um, which is a, it's a lot of money for a DAC um, and I think my cliff notes are that your money's better spent elsewhere <laughs> in your system um, I'm not saying that there isn't a real you know, sound difference to be had from this. And, um, in fact, it's just continued me down the slippery slope of, of upgrades. Um, ultimately moving on now to, uh, cord products to their, uh, cutest deck, um, which is just continuing my search for something that is very, uh, natural and analog sounding, but without sacrificing detail. And I guess that'd be my, my sort of feedback, um, for this thing is that, um, it, it has an incredible amount of detail. It really is good to detail retrieval, and it really does it in this very natural presentation that sounds to my ear like, you know, really, really quite enjoyable. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day, it's still a little bit soft, and you're still sacrificing a little bit of space. Um, it feels a little bit more closed in. Um, like I said, I think it sounds really good. I would be happy with this if I had never heard anything else. <laughs> um, if I hadn't heard the the uh, cutest, I think this, this would have been kind of an end game deck. And I think for a lot of people, it could be. Um, you know, just while we're looking at the back real quick, um, you got a bunch of digital in options: USB, um, two optical, two coaxial, 
and then uh, this is outputting balance. So you've got XLRs, and then you've also got um, single-ended um, RCAs. Um, they both sound good. I will say, I think this DAC is like if ideally you're running it into something that's balanced and then you've got that whole balance chain. And I really do think that pays a lot of dividends for this DAC. The single ended coming off of here sounds like even more sort of closed in and a little bit flatter. And the uh, XLR out sounded um, bigger and more spacious and the detail was a little bit crisper to my ear. Um, could have had to do with the rest of the chain and the amps that were after it, but um, just doing kind of A to B uh, with the single ended and the balanced outs into, um, I think it was the audio GD amp that I have that has both, you know, single ended and, and balanced and is a balanced amp itself. Um, so maybe a little bit that, that amp, uh, was playing a factor there, but anyway, um, so yeah, uh, this thing is heavy. It's built like a tank build quality is really nice. Um, I'm getting a little fingerprints all over it right now, but it's really nice chassis. Um, the LEDs on the front are very subtle and nice and quiet when they're on. Um, you know, I'm on Mac, so it's plug and play, very easy to live with. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're watching this video and you're interested in this DAC and you understand what sort of compares at this price point, uh, I think it's good value for money. Um, but as I said earlier, I think if you're, you know, if you've got a $800 pair of headphones and you're going to buy a $750 DAC, I might say sell your $800 pair of headphones and get yourself a $1,500 pair of headphones and not worry about the DAC um, or put the money into an amp. I just think in my experience, if the three major components, and we'll not worry about, you know, interconnects and power cables and cables to your headphones and all the other little accessories, but if, if your major components are your DAC, your amp, and your actual headphones, I feel like the amp and headphones for me make a much more noticeable difference in terms of the the quality and the sound characteristics. So whether I'm pushing more towards warmer or detailed or spacious or boomy or whatever I want, I think you get you you can twist those those dials um, more quickly um, by changing out your amp and your headphones than you can your DAC. In my opinion, as always, these videos are just my little opinion. Um, but anyway, if you're interested in this guy and you understand what you're getting into, I think it's fantastic. Um, the resale market's pretty strong for him, so if you get it and you don't love it, you can probably turn around and not take too big of a beating. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll do a follow-up video later once I've lived with the cutest a bit more and maybe share some more detailed comparison notes on those two. Anyway. Uh, this is uh, Seinfeld.